Okay, so we're going to start looking at programming fundamentals, and this is where we'll start to look at our ability to code. We're going to be looking at some of the theory behind this in order to help you develop your understanding of the code that you write, and in turn, help and make you more confident. So a quick starter activity, I want you to have a look at these three options, and I want you to think about which one of these is easiest for you to understand. Take a few moments to have a think, and we'll have a quick discussion. So if we look at the first one, so A, a is binary code. This is ultimately the most simplest form for the computer to understand any form of data. B is assembly language. Assembly language is a slightly more um, higher level programming. So it's something that's closer to the English language, but still is very difficult for us to understand. It's hard for us to follow and make sense of, but it's uh, still slightly easier for the computer to understand. And C, which is the highest level of uh, programming languages, of the three options that you can see. Now this is closer to the English language, it's closer to us being able to read this and understand this, even if we aren't the most advanced programmers. We could still probably follow what that program is doing. So I would argue that probably C is the easiest to understand, and that's us as humans being able to read that as almost simplified English language. So specification content, we're looking to build on our understanding of variables, constants, operators, inputs, outputs, and assignments. And this will span over the more than one lesson, uh, but it, as there's quite a lot of information there, but we'll touch on a few of those sections within this session. In terms of requirements, we need to uh, use the techniques in a high level language within the classroom. In particular, we're going to be using Python for these sessions. We're going to understand each of these techniques, and then we're going to recognize the following operators. So there's a list there of comparison operators as well as arithmetic operators. So first of all, it's, it's worthwhile starting with the most simple form of program and a simple output statement in Python. And you can see on screen, you've got the example there, print and then hello world. Now, a print statement is the simplest way of outputting data in Python. And it's basically what as everything that you'll see on screen from your programs will be from this print statement. When you get into a further study or a higher level of computer science, it might be a case that you're using graphical outputs. But for GCSE, the scope is to simply just be able to use text based programming. The first thing I want to draw your attention to is the fact that print in itself is all lowercase, and you can see that it's color-coded purple. That's because within idle, there is some syntax highlighting that will change the colors depending on what the uh, purpose is. You'll notice that Hello World is in green, and that's there for you to be able to identify that that is in itself some text. And we'll talk about that in a little bit uh, later on. So variables then. Variables allow us to name a memory location where data can be stored and they're referenced by that given name. The data in this variable can be edited and changed as the program runs. So it could be, for example, things like the score in a game or the time left in a, um, on a level, for example, are good examples of things that you might use variables for, things that will alter and change your program runs. When we're creating our variables, it's always good practice to use sensible and appropriate names. So if we're, for example, storing the score, it might be sensible for us to call our variable score. Whereas obviously, if we name it something completely meaningless, it might make it more difficult later on in our program to remember what it is that we're using for that variable. There are a few other rules to consider. Now, firstly, variables should always be written in lowercase with them having no spaces as well. But it might well be that you want to write, for example, my name, in which case you can either write my name with no space or you can use an underscore to give that feeling of a space, but whilst still maintaining a continuous single string, okay? You can see in the bottom right of the screen, you've got an example of how you would create a variable. So this is where you'd write name equals, and then in speech marks, Bob, where Bob is the name, the speech marks are important, we'll come on to that shortly. Name is what we are using to identify a variable, this is referred to as the identifier, and that is then used to sig single or signal what our memory location is called. You'll notice that there's a single equal sign in the middle, and this is our assignment operator. This is saying to store the value Bob into the identifier name. Our constants then. Now a constant is um, again a memory location that's given an identifier. In this case, uh, the example at the bottom right, we've given the identifier for, uh, for pi, so we're looking at the value of pi, and you can see the value of 3.142 will be stored there. Constants are used for things that won't change within our program. So ideally, these are things that cannot change. So things like pi, where it's a fixed value, or the speed of gravity, for example, things that are fixed within your program's uh, running. 
these will not change whilst your program is running. The, the idea is that they cannot change. In Python, it's good practice to have your constants in uppercase, and this highlights that it's a constant, but in truth, if you write it in uppercase or lowercase, it won't change the functionality. It's just about good practice. In variables, we also consider how we can reassign data to a variable. So in this example, you've got Bob, Bill, and Ben. And you can see here that name equals Bob, name equals Bill, and name equals Ben. Now this will reassign the variable twice. So we declare the variable, we create it, name equals Bob. We then reassign the value Bill to our variable name. Then we assign Ben to our variable name. And it, the thing that would be printed at that point is the uh, name Ben is the final thing that is stored. So it's worthwhile commenting that variables can only store a single piece of data at any time, and they'll be overwritten if you try to add any data. So Bob gets overwritten by Bill, Bill gets overwritten by Ben. Now, computers are really, really good at a whole host of tasks, and some things they're less good at. So for example, when we're creating our programs, the computer will try to uh, store the data, but uh, we need to give it some indication as to how we want that data stored. And if you recall, earlier on, I mentioned about the quotation marks around strings. So if you think back where we had the hello world in green writing with the speech marks around it, those speech marks are actually telling our Python program that the data inside the speech marks is to be stored as text. Now, our text can be alphanumeric, and you can see in this example here, we're referring to text as being a string. And as you can see, the two examples we've got here, ABC as one example, but then notice we've got some new numbers within here as well. So this is what we refer to as alphanumeric. So it's letters and numbers. So we can store our string with a combination of letters and numbers. Our strings can be sentences or phrases. They don't necessarily strictly have to just be a single word. Um, and so it's a case that we can be, be quite flexible with these. You have characters. Characters are where you might be storing a singular letter. So in this case, for example, A, B, C, and so on. Integers. Integers are our whole numbers. Now these, as I said, one, two, three is an example. Negative numbers also fall into integer, uh, can fall into integers as well, provided that they are whole numbers. And then you've got this float slash real. Now I've included float slash real because in some programming languages they're referred to as real, but in Python it's referred to as floats. And these are our decimal numbers. So things like 1.2, 4.5, and again, 3.142. The final data type that you'll come across is Boolean values. And these refer to uh, storing our true or false values. So as we program, we can check to see if something's true or false, and that can then be stored as a Boolean, where it's just either a one or other outcome. In Python, you will use a range of operators as well. And these operators is probably something that you've come across in maths. And most of these you may well be familiar with. It might be a case of getting a little bit of practice at which way rounds the less than or greater than symbols go. But again, if we look at the comparison operators, we've got two equal signs, we'll compare, the left hand and the right hand side together. We've got not equals, well that will say the left hand side is not equal to the right hand side, for example. We've got less than, saying is the left hand side less than the right hand side. We have less than or equal to, and this is really handy when we're testing boundary data. So for example, if I was to say it's less than or equal to 10, that includes the number 10 within that range. Greater than, again, quite straightforward, and then greater than or equal to again that process of being able to test our boundary data. The arithmetic op operators, we've got addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division, just as you do in maths. And then we have three further, which may be things that are new to you. So modulus or mod. This is the calculation where we can do a division, but find out what the remainder is. Now in Python, this is written with the percentage symbol, but this might be, for example, if we were to say five mod two, we know that two can go into five twice, with a remainder of one. So that calculation would output one as the answer. It tells us what the remainder is. And you'd write that by putting simply five, then the percent sign, then two. That would then give you the answer of being one, as I mentioned, with the remainder. If we look at the quotient or div, this is what we can also refer to as integer division. And this is where we can get how many times a number goes into a value. So if we use that same principle of five, div two, now in Python it's five and then two forward slash, and then the number two. If we did that and wrote that code, we would get the answer two, because two goes into five twice. So it tells us how many whole times that number can go in. An exponentiation is numbers to the power of. 
So you might, for example, have two squared, two cubed, and so forth. And we would write that as in Python with two stars. So where I've got at the bottom this example of x star star y, if I wanted to write two cubed, I would write two star star y. And that would give us numbers to the power of three. You can change those numbers accordingly depending on the calculation that you want to carry out. 